hello guys welcome to my youtube channel so today i would like to explain you some aspects of diaphragmatic hernias uh, some easy points to understand so first what's diaphragm diaphragm is the it's an uh, thin skeletal muscle which is contract and flattens when we inhale so when we inhale the diaphragm is a muscle so this will contract uh, and um, <clears throat> it will get flattened so this will create a vacuum effect that pulls air into the lungs and uh, when we exhale as the same manner it relaxes and the air is pushed out and um, these muscles uh, controlled by the movements of the like diaphragm and um, it is innervated by phrenic nerve there are three main opening big openings in the diaphragm uh, it is for first one is vena cava for amen it is for inferior vena cava and uh, esophageal hiatus it is the opening for the esophagus and uh, <coughs> outer hiatus uh, aortic hiatus it is for aorta so <coughs> the diaphragm it's not only the respiratory organ like it's not only the fun the function not only the respiratory function it also have um, non-respiratory functions such as like uh, it increase the intra-abdominal pressure to help body to get rid of the vomit urinary feces and also it plays pressure on the esophagus and uh, it will prevent air acid reflex and uh, we can see the normal anatomy of the lower esophageal sphincter lower esophageal sphincter is the very important part in the lower part of the esophagus which is prevent the gastroesophageal reflex so here it's a um, uh, endoscopical picture of the lower esophageal sphincter it's the normal esophageal sphincter so today my topic the main topic is diaphragmatic hernia so now we will look about diaphragmatic hernia so what is diaphragmatic hernia any prolapse of the abdominal organ in the thoracic cavity through the congenital gaps uh, which are cerebrocostal or sternocostal trigones or through dilated natural apages like we already mentioned here natural apages are three three big apages right hiatal opening aortic opening and vena cava foramen those are natural apages and uh, <clears throat> through the traumatic opening any blunt trauma or penetrating trauma uh, can cause the diaphragm to uh, tear it will cause a prolapse of the organ so here we will look uh, look about risk factors of the <clears throat> diaphragmatic hernia any uh, situation which is increasing the intra abdominal pressure will cause prolapse of the organ because see here in this picture i am like it's an just for a uh, schema schematical picture it's not a um, anatomical picture like i wrote for my <clears throat> or easiness for the understanding so when the intra abdominal pressure increases the organs will get more pressure like out from outside and it will push uh, out outside through an opening like any defect if you have it will pushed out through that defect so uh, <clears throat> so the reasons where you can get high intra abdominal pressure such as obese patient they can have high intra abdominal pressure and pregnancy also can give intra abdominal pressure high bending <coughs> and coughing weight lifting and uh, along with these things age also contributing uh, because during the age process during the patient getting old age the muscles <coughs> muscles activity will get decreased right so the muscle will get relaxed more so the opening will get more so prolapse can uh, occur very easily <coughs> so next thing we will discuss about uh, classification of diaphragmatic hernias mm, according to the like there are some classifications according to some uh, categories like first we will discuss about by the origin according to the origin it can be congenital or acquired congenital means the <coughs> the um, like the hernia will occur during the um, childbirth like it's it will be in, in from the childbirth 
and acquired means it's occurred after childbirth like uh, any reasons for traumatic <coughs> hernia or non traumatic acquired can be two types traumatic or non traumatic and by the location hernias of the upper neurotic tendon so <coughs> here i just wrote a picture just think it's a esophageal uh, hiatus aortic hiatus and um, <coughs> inferior vena cava from okay so <coughs> diaphragm is made of made up of upper neurotic tendons uh, muscles and muscular tendinous parts and natural openings okay so is in these parts if they are having any defect the organs can get prolapsed so you can tell the <coughs> hernia according to by localization hernia of the upper neurotic tendon and hernia of the muscular part of the diaphragm hernia of the muscular tendinous part of the diaphragm hernia of the gaps and natural openings so other classification by the presence of hernial sac so uh, if the hernial sac is present it is true hernia if the hernial sac is absent it is false hernia and by the clinical cause uh, it can be acute hernia or chronic hernia <coughs> and by the clinical picture you can tell incarcerated and non incarcerated and reducible and irreducible incarcerated means a, a hernia <coughs> can stuck inside in through a uh, opening through a defect it will go outside and uh, it can get stuck so it will not irreducible like irreducible means the hernia you can push inside the organ to the um, actual place but irreducible means you can't push it will not pushed inside it will fixed in that place only <coughs> so incarcerated hernia is the irreducible hernia and uh, Uh, sometimes the bowel also can come and stuck in the in there mostly and um, if it is um, happen for long time uh, strangulation will occur and uh, strangulated hernia will form <coughs> next one is according to the hernial size the, it is it can divided into a small size medium size and large size small size mean a 2 cm diameter and medium size mean 2 to 5 cm and large means more than 5 cm by the quantity it can be solitary solitary means only one <coughs> multiple and uh, main clinical symptoms uh, you, you can divide the main clinical symptoms uh, as git symptoms and uh, cardio respiratory symptoms so cardio respiratory symptoms which is depend on the rate of the like heart displacement and lung compression okay <clears throat> like for example see in this picture uh, if if it is the hernia occurred um, it will compress the heart <clears throat> pericardium will um, some part of the omentum or some part of the bowel loop enter the pericardium and pericardium will get <clears throat> tamponade so it can cause dyspnea tachycardia sy cyanosis and um, <clears throat> these symptoms can occur and also if the if the part of the um, organ compress the lungs you can get collapse symptoms and uh, dyspnea there can be uh, causes causes of the dyspnea can be cardiac causes metabolic causes and chest causes for the from the chest it can be copd and bronchial asthma and pneumonia and interstitial lung fibrosis these can cause dyspnea uh, these are the chest <coughs> causes and metabolic causes anemia can cause dk can cause dk means diabetic ketoacidosis and uremia can cause <coughs> and cardiac cause Uh, decompensated heart failure can cause dyspnea and acute pulmonary edema can cause pulmonary embolism can cause angina uh, equivalent can cause cardiac tamponade can cause and pulmonary hypertension can cause so <clears throat> we can tell the symptoms of heart uh, which are the differential diagnosis like um, they can have heart attack symptoms and pain sweating shortness of breath and heartburn in auscultation in case of diaphragmatic hernia can hear peristalsis in the thoracic wall why mm, the now the abdominal organ is in the thoracic cavity so when you auscultate uh, by the stethoscope normally uh, it should be in the abdominal part right abdominal organ should be in the abdominal part 
but now it is in the thoracic part so when you put stethoscope and observe listen uh, you will see peristaltic movement uh, in the thor thoracic ward uh, so in this picture you can see the um, cyanosis see this is the cyanosis bluish coloration and um, cardiac tamponade there are um, there is a triad back triad called first one is hypotension jugular venous distension and muffled heart sound this is um, all together called back triad if you had these things you can diagnose cardiac tamponade and um, also tension pneumothorax also will have uh, these two main things and one is differ like hypotension jugular venous distension both are same for cardiac tamponade and tension pneumothorax but uh, the difference is absence breath sounds so don't confuse with um, cardiac tamponade and um, tension pneumothorax and um, gi symptoms you can tell it's depend on the organs which dislocate into the thoracic cavity so for example um, if the stomach uh, prolapses into the thoracic cavity the stomach can get torsion 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 means twisted it can be get twisted and can cause acute or chronic torsion and also uh, the bowel loop can enter the th uh, thoracic cavity and it can get stuck and can cause uh, acute or chronic intestinal obstruction so because of um, the bowel got stuck so the um, food particles will not go further so it will uh, collect it here only in the stomach will collect it and um, it will cause vomiting and also if the bowel loop can get stuck and get stuck and the blood supply to this organ will decrease and or ischemia can occur so this will cause the chest pain or abdominal pain uh, and also if the herniation of the stomach or any organ uh, prolapses through the opening it can compress the esophagus and it can cause dysphagia so what are the GIT symptoms? Abdominal pain, chest pain, distension of the abdomen, vomiting, inability to pass, gaze. So now we will discuss about traumatic diaphragmatic hernia. What is trauma? Trauma is an um, injury, right? So it can be blunt thoracic or abdominal trauma associated with diaphragmatic injury. Uh, 5 to 7 percentage of the incidents are this. Uh, in this 3 to 5 15 percentage of the incidents can cause uh, penetrating injury these injuries may be left unrecognized when they occur but often are uh, uncovered months later during workup for related symptoms it means uh, when the small size of um, traumatic injury you will not diagnose in the first first time even in the ct scan also you will not find a small hole so after months or after some years like it can be uh, during our day-to-day -day works our in, like during also during our breathing also our intra-abdominal pressure is increasing right during those period it can cause uh, like that traumatic opening will be dilated more so that time only you can understand so open or closed damages of the diaphragm lead to the prolapse of the organ through the opening at the at that moment of the trauma or sometimes after the trauma months and years later mostly left up left part of the diaphragm damage more than right part because right side you have uh, liver right so um, right, left part is the most part of the most frequent part is get trauma and um, but also both diaphragm can get uh, traumatic injury very seldomly rupture is formed on the border of the muscular and tendinous part of the diaphragm and um, main clinical symptoms as we like discussed earlier gastrointestinal and cardiorespiratory uh, gastrointestinal symptoms depend on the kind of organ that dislocates the thoracic cavity so this part i explained already and um, cardiorespiratory symptoms also same like depend on the uh, displacement of the heart and lung compression uh, so the main instrumental examination you have to do like plain thoracic x-ray uh, in plain thora thoracic x-ray you can see like uh, gaze uh, 
you can see like raised dome of the diaphragm and movement like decreased movement of the lungs you can see and uh, liver also displaced upper part upper and normally gastric air bubble should be under the diaphragm right but uh, you will see the gastric air bubble upper in the thoracic part so it will usually um, it is a differential diagnosis to the lung abscess also like dry cavity or chronic cavity lung abscess you should think about lung abscess also it's a differential diagnosis and uh, also barium swallow can done and endoscopy with biopsy can done and esophageal manometry can done and the main thing the gold standard is ct also ultra, ultra ultrasound also can done uh, ct is the gold standard investigation in ct you will see this is the ct example of the ct you will see um, color sign or hourglass sign on ct this is hourglass you know right already everyone knows hourglass uh, so it will looks like hourglass appearance so these are the investigations methods complications of diaphragmatic hernias uh, it can enter the abdominal cavity and stomach can get torsion right so torsion of the stomach and if the intestine is get stuck uh, intestinal obstruction can occur and um, the bowel or omentum if it is uh, herniated to the pericardial sac it can cause pericardial tamponade and if the bowel is um, obstructed it can cause ulceration in stomach ulceration of the stomach or bowel wall um, the treatment option like for all traumatic hernias must be operated like any uh, traumatic hernia it should be operated only um, principle of the surgical treatment is first you should um, suppress this organ into the same place where it was already and uh, suture the diaphragmatic defect see in this diaphra di like diagram it is just for the explanation so uh, this bowel loop is uh, suppression into the natural place and the suture uh, has put suture material uh, should be lausen suture it's a not uh, catgut suture lausen suture means polyester, polyester suture Mm, which is the non-absorbable suture material so the recurrence rate of the hernia will be reduced mm, and after the uh, like suture application in the diaphragm opening is more reliable method uh, have to done in case of uh, suture tension uh, above the suture you have to do plasty uh, by the strengthened by the allograft uh, you can see in this picture first suture suture line in the this is the suture line in the green color and above that you ha you have to strengthen by allograft mm, so some important notes character volume and the rate of the transferred organ filling and also size uh, from the location of the hernial opening influences the clinical symptoms uh, for example, like already I discussed about this, but again I will tell you, cardiopulmonary depend on the rate of uh, the displacement of the heart and lung compression, right? So the transfer speed of the abdominal organ in the thoracic cavity has the big meaning because the compensatory mechanism fails to develop because it's a very fast movement. So compensatory mechanism will be will not be there. That's why acute traumatic hernia you will have full-blown evidence of dyspnea cyanosis tachycardia sometimes collapse um, connected with the lung compression like collapse is connected with the lung compression and the dislocation of the mediastinum and loca like localization of the hernia opening in case of congenital or acquired pericardial hernia uh, the migration even of the small part of the bowel or omentum in the pericardial cavity cause symptoms of uh, heart imp compression or pericardial tamponade uh, so blunt trauma abdominal trauma how it can cause diaphragmatic hernia uh, if the blunt trauma occurs uh, which is increase the intra-abdominal pressure and uh, if the intra-abdominal pressure is increased the diaphragm can't stand the pressure and it can break so uh, through the break open part the um, intra-abdominal parts can be go outside 
So clinical picture of the traumatic hernia, traumatic hernia I already mentioned, and also uh, like along with this, uh, patient can have gastroesophageal reflex disease also. So he he can have like um, regurgitation of the food and um, sore belching. He can have and uh, so now i will talk about other part hiatal hernia uh, hiatal hernia what is hiatal hernia um, herniation of the abdominal organ usually stomach through the esophageal hiatus in the diaphragm um, already i showed a picture about uh, esophageal hiatus right through that esophageal hiatus opening hiatus means opening right so through that uh, esophageal hiatus uh, abdominal organs can prolapse so the diagnosis is usually made by radiographic contrast studies demonstrating an abdominal organ higher than the level of the diaphragm. So the causes can be uh, weakened muscle tissue allows the stomach to bulge up through the diaphragm. So causes uh, age related changes in the diaphragm during the age process the diaphragm get weak, weakened. Also, the injury to the area, for example, after the trauma or certain types of surgery can cause weaken this area. And also congenital, uh, for example, the, the patient has been born with this large hiatus. And uh, persistent and uh, intense pressure on the surrounding muscles, such as while coughing, vomiting, straining, during the bowel movements, exercising or lifting the heavy objects. Hiatal hernia can be... Um, there are main types, two main types, but uh, uh, actually four types having. But uh, the main types are type 1, sliding or axial hiatal hernia, uh, which is results of the extension of the endo-abdominal fascia through the hiatus, which allows a small portion of the gastric cardia to slide up uh, into the esophageal hiatus. Uh, in this, like, phrenic, like, phrenoesophageal membrane remains intact. It's not ruptured. There is no true peritoneal hernial sac, so it's a false hernia. The main symptom is gastroesophageal reflex. See, in this scheme, I will explain uh, the esophagus is coming right. So, normally, the endo abdominal fascia is extend out upside. So, along with that, the uh, stomach part also will go up. So, low esophageal sphincter also automatically will go up. Uh, normally, the low esophageal sphincter should be in the level of diaphragm or below the diaphragm, uh, but now it's in the upper part. So the low esophageal sphincter get um, relaxed somewhat because uh, there is nothing to um, compress this one, right? So it will get relaxed. So uh, whatever the acid acid remaining in the stomach, it can enter the esophagus. So acid reflex can occur. Um, so peritoneum is not coming out so that's why it's a false honey like peritoneal honey sac is not present there and other uh, type is paraesophageal hernia paraesophageal hernia uh, it can be type 2 type 3 type 4 in type 2 the um, along with the esophagus uh, abdominal organ like um, stomach part can enter the abdominal cavity Along with that, uh, the peritoneum also will enter. So, peritoneal sac will be there. So, true hernia. Um, but the main difference in this type 2 and type 1 is low vasophageal sphincter is upper, localized in the upper part uh, above the diaphragm in type 1. And in type 2, the low vasophageal sphincter will be in the same uh, position like it's a normal position not abnormal position um, so like in this opening there's a defect that's why the organ get prolapsed so you can see it's a normal stomach picture and a sliding hernia hiatal hernia picture and paraisovigil rolling type of hiatal hernia so i forgot to tell about type 3 is um, this the low vice of uh, type 3 right so see type 3 you can think 1 plus 2 equal to type 3 so 1 means uh, first type of uh, hiatal hernia 2 means 
second type of hiatal hernia it means in this type 3 also also the lower esophageal sphincter uh, also can get upper and also the stomach part will prolapse in the thoracic cavity so both uh, will be there in type 4 uh, bowel loops can get um, outside through this esophageal hiatus uh, that is called type 4 so here you can see a picture for type 1 hiatal hernia normal hiatus and hiatal hernia and uh, symptoms we already discussed okay we, we discussed for traumatic hernia so what are the complications of uh, type 2 hiatal hernia it is like gastric strangulation or infarction because uh, gastric part can enter the um, abdominal cavity and it can get stuck and the blood supply can cut completely and it can get strangulated or infarction or acute or chronic ulcers with bleeding or perforation can occur and uh, acute intrathoracic gastric dilatation can occur and respiratory inf insufficiency can occur. The main thing is in hiatal hernias, the gastroesophageal reflex. The symptoms of uh, reflex are the heartburn and regurgitation of the patient and dysphagia, bleeding and substernal chest pain, a sensation of spasm or something uh, stuck in the thorax and respiratory symptoms will be there because uh, when the patient got reflex or um, the digestive food can enter the esophagus, right, backflow it can enter the um, respiratory system like can get aspirate so it can cause cough and other symptoms dyspnea like that so in this uh, barium swallow study you can see hiatal hernia it's a paraesophageal hernia it's a um, type 1 sliding hernia also type 1 sliding hernia uh, it's also type 1 sliding hernia because here you can see stomach part and here narrow part and also this one have stomach part up and narrow part so type 1 so the di diagnostic tool for hiatal hernia is barium swallow chest x-ray endoscopy with biopsy stool for um, like uh, like stool check for uh, bleeding unknown bleeding right so micro bleeding uh, quick stool test and esophageal manometry for treatment uh, there are medical treatment and uh, surgical treatment uh, treatment uh, goal is to relieve the symptoms and prevent the complications like bleeding and uh, decrease the regurgitation of the stomach content into the esophagus so for that for these um, regurgitation things and to prevent GERD can give antacids so h2 receptor blocker or proton pump inhibitor so like antacids can neutralize the stomach acidity which already um, secreted and uh, proton mum inhibitor can decrease the acid production extra. So surgical intervention, uh, the indications for the surgical treatments are like any traumatic diaphragmatic hernias are indication for the surgery and incarcerated hernia and any strangulated hernias and failed medical treatment can give and patients which according to patients which, which can give. So surgical intervention, it is like uh, laparoscopically can done or laparotomically can done. Um, so the surgery is like we have to uh, pull back that organ to the proper cavity and after that we have to put a suture and above that we have to put plastic of um, plastic of the diaphragm with the aloe graft uh, here it's a suture and aloe graft above that for the strengthening of this suture it's aloe graft material here and um, in the in hernia gold standard is um, poly, poly uh, polypropylene mesh is the um, standard in case of diaphragmatic hernia it is not uh, after the suture things the next thing is our main aim is to prevent the gastroesophageal reflex right so we have to do um, some medical for treatment for that like antacids omeprazole uh, opentoprazole metoclopramide which is increase the gastric emptying in esophageal peristalsis and weight loss is recommended for the patients 
and uh, sur- for the surgical treatment anti reflex surgery we have to do after the proper surgery we have to do anti reflex surgery um, to prevent the gerd gerd means gastroesophageal reflex disease and um, the steps are we have to mobilize the cardia and lower part of the esophagus and we have to put some pl- applications of the stomach around the intra abdominal part of the esophagus and uh, it will narrow the esophageal hiatus there are some techniques anti reflex surgery methods like hill ellison operation and bell c mark operation and nissen fund duplications so i will explain these things now uh, for example if it is a bell c mark uh, for operation we have to do in the sixth intercostal space we have to put it it, it should be in the thoracic approach and we should uh, um, enter through the sixth in the in in the costal space so um, the esophagus is pulled up uh, toward the aortic arch to allow the restoration of the long segment of the intra abdominal esophagus the cardia is completely we have to free from the diaphragm then the esophagus hiatus is narrowed by the placement of sutures in the posterior crura uh, then um, when eventually uh, tied this should permit only one finger of the um, operators to pass through the narrowed hiatus and then we have to do uh, applications uh, 270 degree not 360 degree uh, it's a important thing remember that it should be in the 270 degree of esophageal circumference Mm, and we have to leave the vagus nerve posteriorly and uh, then there are two rows of sutures and uh, three metra sutures are placed each layers we have to do um, and uh, the first row is from the adjacent gastric fundus into the lower 2 cm of the esophagus like low esophagus and um, second row is passing through the edge of the tendinous portion of the diaphragm and the fundus of the stomach and the esophageal muscle from the 4 cm from the uh, gastroesophageal junction so after these things we have to allow it manually to um, reduce uh, like itself we should um, then reduce manually to settle by itself it's a schematical diagram for that uh, first we have to pull the so we have to our tickage because it's a thoracic um, approach and uh, we should uh, put applications uh, 260 degree 270 degree not 360 what is 360 270 360 means the applications you have to take the fundus of the stomach behind the esophagus and uh, carrying up to this point like where you started that point you have to stitch but in 270 above that you have to finish like above means uh, before uh, reaching here you have to finish mm, and um, second one there are two row of suture right first row of suture is uh, from the fundus to the 2 cm from the lower surface sphincter you have to put one suture and second suture you have to put from the um, muscular tendinous part of the tendinous part of the esophagus like diaphragm to the adjacent fundus and to the 4 cm from the lower esophageal sphincter and between them three rows of uh, metra sutures you have to, have to put and second method is nissen fund duplication nissen fund duplication is uh, like you have to do you can do it uh, either abdominal approach or thoracic approach uh, it is like um, you you will take the fundus of the stomach backward and you will stitch it uh 360 degree and uh, if the like there is one problem in this if you um, if this stitching slip down into the body of the stomach it can cause double chamber stomach which can obstruct the proximal um, pouch and causing the severe reflex so this should be uh, very carefully done like adequate mobilization of this esophagus and placing the rubber around the esophagus above the intact gastroesophageal is so like gastrohepatic ligament and hepatic branch of the vagus you have to done and uh, hill ellison operation is the posterior gastro gastropexy it's the um, it should be done in the abdominal approach 
so abdominal incision have to done uh, we have to um, like extensive mobilization of the esophagus through the hiatal opening and suture are placed in the diaphragmatic crura to the narrow to the hiatus i mean uh, it's a diaphragm right so it's the crura medial crura uh, here medial crura here celiac tongue uh, so you should take the diaphragm, the low esophageal sphincter near the medial crura and you have to put anterior and posterior suture for that. Mm, that is called uh, posterior gastropexy. Uh, and uh, that's all guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this lecture and uh, I hope you understood uh, some of them. Mm. Please subscribe and uh, press bell buttons if you like this video. Thank you guys.